Yeah, deep into the second half of today's show and there is no extra time or added time so we have to get moving after a 2-0 first leg defeat versus canada at the national stadium in kingston on friday the reggae girls will be looking to turn around their fortunes in toronto later on tuesday the winner of the clash set to take place at a sold out bmo field will qualify for the paris 2024 olympics and the concacaf women's gold cup the reggae girls will need something they have lacked recently and that is goals and head coach lauren donaldson says his team is still searching for a combination that works. So like a magician, you can convert defensive strength into attacking strength. I mean, we have to um, um, play in a lot of games. You know, Canada, this team has played maybe 100 games together. We are, we are a team that's coming together and um, we're still searching for some combination that, that, that we think can work. So scoring goal is very difficult. I mean, we haven't played anybody who's a slouch. So we have to get games that are winnable games for us that we can start building and building. But it's, it doesn't come easy when you play teams like Canada and France and Brazil and those teams. It's not going to be easy. So hopefully we can find a way and get through the situation and start scoring more goals. Yeah, here's a stat that the Jamaican fans will not want to hear. The reggae girls have played Canada on 10 occasions. They have lost all 10 of them. They have scored one goal. Mm. Joining us to lend his expert analysis to this situation, our in-house analyst, Lejay Williams. Lejay, it's great to have you on the show. Do you give the Jamaicans a chance tonight at the BMO field against Canada? Can they turn this around? Well, Ricardo, you're starting off with the really tough questions. <laughs> that, that, it's, it's a really sticky one. I'm not one to go against what we have seen in the past, so unfortunately... Although I do think that this reggae girls outfit is significantly improved than the one that has played Canada over the years. I think it would be a really tall order and I wouldn't say that. I'm not going to completely write them off. They've, they've, they've rewritten history on several occasions. But in terms of tonight, I'm not quite sure that they'll get it done. Yeah, you saw the World Cup matches. You also saw the, the qualifying game on Friday. Khadija Bonishaw, um Essentially, we see her so often playing as the lone woman up front. Is it time to drop Khadija Bonishaw um, in an attacking midfield role, um, a more creator role um, than a finisher role to help this team out? I don't think so because then you'd be depriving the team of their best natural finisher, their best natural but, attacker. But, but, but what's the point of a natural attacker if opportunities are not being created for that attacker? No service. Yeah. Well, I'm not quite sure if... Well, let me say it this way. If the striker isn't getting the ball, the attacking midfielder is also not getting the ball. The midfield is just not transitioning the ball well enough from defence to midfield because the attacking midfielder is still a part of the attacking unit, but, so but, she but, would but still can, not be getting the service. But can Khadija Bodishaw assist with that, given her quality, yes? She is a phenomenal goal scorer, but I think we have seen in the past that she can be a creator as well. Look at, for example, the 2019 World Cup. The one game that Jamaica scored in against Australia was what position did Khadija Bonishaw play? She wasn't up front all alone, but she played behind a striker um, and she was in a position to create. Now, to me, I, I don't see what else is going to work with this team against Canada. Well, it's a mentality thing at the end of the day. Um, one, one, someone who I really look up to in terms of a coaching space would be Eric Radamakas, and he has previously stated that he can tell a lot about a country's football philosophy by the way how they react to danger. We all here at the table, I'm sure everyone at home knows, Jamaica's reaction to danger in, terms, in a football sense is to hoof the ball long. Yeah. That's how we play football. We defend really stoutly. I think that Jamaica has a really good defensive shape that's never going to be the issue. But in terms of what we try to do on the ball, I think it's too passive and react, reactive to what the opposition, reactionary to what the opposition is trying to do. Therefore, I don't think moving Khadija Shah deeper, especially against this Canada team that can hold the ball so well, because Canada's midfield completely outclassed the Jamaica midfield. Not because I, I think that Jamaica has poor midfielders or anything like that, but I just don't think that the solution would be dropping her deeper because I still don't think that Khadija Shah would get on the ball enough 
to cause Canada any problems. So if I'm hearing you correctly, um, are you therefore saying that this crop of players cannot solve the goal-scoring issues that we have against quality opposition now? And Canada is quality. They're, they really are quality, but that's not what I'm saying, actually. I'm saying that it's, it's not a personnel issue. It's more of a coaching issue. And I'm not saying that as a slight at the coach. It's just what he wants from the team. He wants to set up defensively and then try and hit on the break. And those are the chances that Jamaica created on Friday, the, the half chances. Those are the chances that we created at the past two World Cups also. We just try, Jamaica just try and defend stoutly, get the ball up to Khadija Shah and play around her. That's not always going to work. You need to keep the ball better. You need to progress the ball better. Mm -hmm. And that's just not what he's trying to accomplish. So mm -hmm. that's mainly the issue. But just a couple of minutes ago, we heard him talk. And he was suggesting that this team isn't playing enough games for them to experiment and get the right combinations to start getting goals. He referenced Canada, this team probably playing over 100 matches between themselves, the Jamaicans far, far fewer. What would be his mind, his thought process then? What do you think he was saying when he says he needs more games with these girls to try to find the combination that would give them, give them goals? What, what are his options? Because that's I'm, what he just said. I'm not quite sure what his options are. As I said, I, I honestly don't think the, per, the option is a personnel one. The, the, the problem is a personnel one. I'm, so I'm not quite sure. Maybe he wants the attack to gel a bit more. So maybe they know the combinations because there are really good counter-attacking teams and in the world and they want to defend. But maybe once you move on to the attacking phase, everyone knows the right runs to make and so on and so forth. So maybe that's what he's referring to. But I think unless you can have a style of play which dictates more possessive football that tries to move the ball around much more patiently yeah. in attacking areas, I don't think the problem is going to be solved holistically. Yeah. yeah. And Canada's coach, Beverly Priestman, she spoke about them having some tricks up their sleeves. Uh, the striker, Adriana Leon, in her interviews, she spoke about the fact that Jamaica was very physical in that Friday game, and she expects them to be even more physical come tonight's match. And they're prepared for it. So I'm asking you now, based on what we saw, what type of match are we expecting tonight? I don't expect anything significantly different than what we saw on Friday. Jamaica started the game really well, but I think once Canada really got into the flow of things, their midfielders, especially Fleming, who I mentioned from Friday, she plays for Chelsea, Quinn as well, that they're number five, they really just dominated the game. They held possession much better than any of the Jamaican players wanted to or could do. So I expect a similar type of game, maybe Jamaica to start quickly, but then once Canada really get into the flow of things, or I think the first goal is going to be crucial, of course, but saying even at an even game state, I do think that Canada will eventually, their quality will eventually tell and they'll get the result. Yeah. Give us a, a, a score prediction for later. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you seem unwilling. Well, uh, as the this guru, uh, as a prediction guru myself, I'm never afraid, Ricardo. Uh, I'll go another, I'll go 3 0 Canada. I saw a lot of people saying 3 0 Jamaica, but I've been mm -hmm. following Jamaicans. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want people to get it confused because, you know, last Friday I wore a red shirt, so people thought I was cheering on Canada. I made sure to wear yellow this time. Good. So good. people know, but. My word's probably going to rub them the wrong way regardless, but I do think Canada will win this one comfortably. Um, we have to go, but any injury update? Because last time we didn't see two... Uh, yeah, I'm hearing that Khadija Shah and Jody Brown both had some injury issues, but they'll be good for tonight. Okay. Yeah, Lance, mm. score, prediction? I, I think two or three nil, yeah, for right. Canada, for Canada, yeah. yeah Jamaica, my thing day. Is that how y'all? No. <laughs> how y'all say it? Is it? Jamaica, Jamaica my thing day. Jamaica, my thing day. No, y'all say my thing day. So whatever it means to get Jamaica across the line, that's what I'm going with. Three nil? Yeah. Yeah, we should just go to a break. <laughs>